Now, from the pages of Assist News Service, Scott Kramer. Our first story comes from Pakistan's largest city, Karachi. Assist has learned that in this city, with a population estimated to be as much as 15 million, there are many different ethnic and religious beliefs and traditions. For the past few years, the crime rate has been mounting with every passing day. Over the past six months, due to various kinds of crimes, thousands of innocent people have been killed. To add to the confusion, the region has a strong three-party system. Meanwhile, there has been no let-up in the violence and killings, and all three parties have begun to blame each other. Many Pakistanis say they are worried about what is going on. The army is busy fighting against terrorism, while the government is trying to eradicate poverty, resolve the power crisis, and in this city the lights go out for hours at a time. Finally, many Christians, opposition parties, and civil societies, as well as Islamic religion groups, are raising their voices to bring an end to the senseless killings. One Christian leader in Pakistan has issued a nationwide call for help. He made his remarks during a rally at a local press club, asking for a restoration of peace. He told the group, quoting, Karachi is burning. In the last six months, over 2,000 innocents have been killed in target killings. Street crimes, kidnapping for ransom, robbery, land grabbing, and many other crimes are on the rise. Additionally, he said that people of all faiths must work together to keep Pakistan from destroying itself. Speaking of that part of the world, our attention now turns to Afghanistan. In that country, Christians and Jews from many parts of the world are viewed by many in Afghanistan to be infidels. We have learned through first-hand accounts of some of the victims there that both Christians and Jews residing in Afghanistan are viewed as agents of U.S. government agencies, particularly the FBI or CIA. Therefore, those who think that way say they are free to use torture when questioning people or even slaughter Christians and Jews with a sharp-edged dagger. Many, while being questioned, are being subjected to a new kind of torture. The victims are strapped to an iron chair and burning candles are placed beneath them, literally roasting their flesh. This is carried out in an attempt to force them to confess crimes they haven't committed and disclose under duress what they were agents of or the FBI or CIA. A Christian in Afghanistan told ANS on condition of anonymity that in some cases allegations of suicide bombings and other incidents were also leveled against Christians and Jews. Many have been thrown into prisons just underground of suspicion with no proof. Finally, we at ASSIST want to salute the brave men and women who were part of the Valiant Rescue effort 10 years ago at the World Trade Center on 9-11. Additionally, we want to salute the churches and religious organizations who have continued to help those who, whose lives were changed forever. Many churches were the first to offer counseling and other services to the survivors. For far too many, 10 years has not been enough to even begin to heal the wounds. For many, the wounds will never be healed. I'm Scott Kramer.